G'day folks, and welcome to my uh, second video lesson for Grade 11 History. This is Mr. Murray. Uh, today I want to just walk everyone through a brief timeline of Canadian history from when Indigenous people first arrived in this country to the modern day. Um, many of these topics we will get into in more detail. Many of these events we'll get into more detail uh, on as the course progresses. But uh, I wanted to just give everyone a brief look at how Canada was before Europeans arrived, uh, how it progressed through the early arrival of Europeans, uh, past the actual founding of Canada as a nation, and a bit into the modern day. Just so you can see uh, where, how far Canada has actually come in a relatively short period of time compared to other nations uh, where we are now and where we might going, might be going. And even if you're not one of my students, uh, you might find some of this very interesting because yeah, there is, there is quite a lot of, of, of fascinating uh, little trivia points uh, about uh, Canadian history and little things that happened along the way. So uh, I've broken it down into uh, little period categories. So we'll start with the pre-European settlement and we'll just kind of go uh, by year here, uh, or groups of years. So beginning about 24,000 years ago, uh, indigenous people finally began to migrate into North America over the Bering Strait land bridge between um, what is now Russia and Alaska. So we're looking at the height of the Ice Age here uh, when the waters had receded and there wasn't this big ocean gap between those two uh, larger continents. Uh, around uh, 13,000 BCE, which is before the Common Era, um, the Ice Age glaciers in Canada began to melt or recede enough to create Niagara Falls one of Canada's most famous natural landmarks and a huge, huge tourist attraction here in southern Ontario. Uh, around 8000 BCE, major Aboriginal settlements started to appear in southern Manitoba, Ontario, and the Pacific Northwest, so British Columbia and Yukon. Uh, before this, in, Aboriginal people in this country were largely nomadic, moving from place to place, hunting game, gathering whatever vegetation they could, uh, camping uh, you know, during harsh weather. But this is about the period where Indigenous people here started to uh, form permanent communities, villages, and long-term settlements. Around 6,000 uh, before Common Era, the first Aboriginal settlements started to appear in Labrador, so uh, along the Atlantic coast of Canada um, in what is now uh, Quebec and Newfoundland. Uh, about a thousand um, years before the Common Era, the Iroquoian nations, First Nations, became the first indigenous group to use agriculture here. And as we uh, get into the next lesson on um, pre uh, uh, pre-European uh, life for indigenous people. We'll talk a bit more about that, specifically what's referred to as the Three Sisters. Uh, about 200 uh, years before the Common Era, the earliest Plains people started to inhabit the Canadian prairies. So Southern Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, that area. Uh, 500 CE, Indigenous groups began to grow corn in what is now southern Ontario. Now moving into the year 1000, thereabout, the Norse, or the Vikings, became the first Europeans to visit this continent, and they founded a very brief settlement in what is now Newfoundland, but for various reasons that, again, we will discuss in a future lesson, return to Europe after just a few years. 1535, Jacques Cartier, one of the early French explorers, arrives in Quebec, and he calls the new land Canada after mistaking a local indigenous word for village with the word nation. Around the year 1600, the first trading post, French trading post, is established 
at Tadoussac, Quebec. Now we're moving into pre-confederation. More Europeans are starting to settle in the country. The year 1608, Quebec City becomes the first permanent European settlement here in North America. Uh, around 1611, the British explorer Henry Hudson, searching for what was called the Northwest Passage, disappears in James Bay after a uh, long, harsh winter forced his crew to mutiny against him and abandon him in that area. The year 1639, the first coal mine opens up in Canada at Grand Lake in New Brunswick. So again, the uh, East Coast in the Maritimes. The year 1670, the Hudson's Bay Company, or HBC, is founded at York Factory in uh, what is now Manitoba. And this began the height of the fur trade here in Canada. In the year 1720, French settlers arrive at what is now Prince Edward Island and began farming settlements in that region. The year 1735, another French explorer, La Verandre, founds the Red River Colony, or what would become Winnipeg, Manitoba, and soon thereafter, uh, the Métis nation appeared after local indigenous people began intermarrying with the French that would soon settle in that area. The year 1754, the population of French settlers in Canada, what is now called New France, is estimated to be at around 55,000 people. The year 1776, New Brunswick is established as a British colony and would later become a province. 1778, British explorer James Cook becomes one of the first Europeans to reach Canada's western coast and discovers Vancouver Island. Between the years 1780 and 1784, a smallpox epidemic uh, brought about by a European settlement, kills thousands of indigenous people in the area around Hudson Bay. 1783, the American Revolutionary War ends and establishes the first border between early Canada and the original 13 U.S. colonies. In the year 1791, the Constitution Act establishes the joint colonies of Upper Canada, which is New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Lower Canada, Ontario and Quebec. In 1807, um, the Montreal Curling Club, Canada's oldest organized sporting organization, is founded in this country. Between 1812 and 1814, we had the War of 1812, which occurred between British North America and the United States colonies that existed at the time. And in 1831, the first day industrial school for Indigenous children is founded in Brantford, Ontario which began what would become the residential school era here in Canada. 1832, there is a countrywide cholera epidemic that kills almost 10% of Canada's entire population at the time, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous. In 1840, Cree and Ojibwe syllabics are created by a Jesuit reverend named James Evans while he was living in Norway House, Manitoba. So before this, indigenous people did not have a writing system. Everything was communicated, recorded through oral histories verbally. And now um, this uh, reverend Evans 
uh, introduced a system of writing to some of Canadian Canada's indigenous groups. In 1840 to 1860, this was the period of the Underground Railway, which was used to sneak uh, black U.S. slaves uh, across the border into Canada uh, in order to obtain their freedom. 1844, Montreal, Quebec is named the head of government for the combined Upper and Lower Canada, moving it from where it had originally been, which was at modern day Kingston, Ontario. In 1857, Bytown, Ontario is renamed Ottawa and is now designated the new capital of Canada or Upper Lower in Canada. 1857, the world's first uh, commercial oil production operation begins at Petrolia, Ontario, um, which is where we get the word petroleum from. So there, were, there was certainly uh, oil mining, oil searching, oil collection in Canada and other parts of the world, but this was the very first uh, largely organized business that involved uh, strictly extracting oil from the ground. In 1862, gold is discovered at Williams Creek, British Columbia, beginning the Canadian Gold Rush. In 1863, the Quebec Conference is held, passing the 72 resolutions which was the legislative or legal foundation for what would soon become the nation of Canada. In 1867, the British North America Act is approved by the uh, English monarchy, put into law, and it joined Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia together as the newly formed Dominion of Canada. On that same day, uh, July 1st, 1867, John A. Macdonald is appointed Canada's first Prime Minister by the uh, Queen of England at the time, and he was also given a knighthood in the same ceremony. Now, into the Confederation era, 1869, Rupert's Land is sold back to the new Canadian government by the Hudson Bay Company in exchange for maintaining uh, some of its various trading lands and um, other operations in the region around Hudson Bay. 1870, Manitoba becomes Canada's fifth province and Louis Riel starts his rebellion uh, against the Canadian government. In 1871, Treaty No. 1, the first of many numbered treaties uh, to uh, soon be established in Canada between the government and indigenous people, is signed in Winnipeg at Lower Fort Garry, which is the ancestral home of the Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis nations. In 1873, the Battle of Cypress Hills, or the Massacre of Cypress Hills as it's sometimes called, spurs the creation of the Northwest Mounted Police, which would later become the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, in order to maintain peace in Canada's Northwest. In 1876, the Indian Act is signed into law, and this divine, defined Aboriginal rights, identity, land usage, but without any kind of consultation or agreement from the Indigenous people of Canada. In 1879, Nicholas Flood Davin recommends mandatory residential schools for Indigenous children. So prior to this, it was optional and most of the time they were day schools where Indigenous children would go, learn English, learn the Bible, learn how to weld, cook, clean, uh, perform carpentry, depending on whether you were male or female, but you would be allowed to go home at the end of the day, go back to your home community. Uh, this is where the true residential school era started, 
where indigenous children began, began to be forced into these schools, uh, whether their apparent parents were okay with it or not, and had to remain there until they were 18. In 1885, the Canadian Pacific Railway is completed, and it's said that one immigrant Chinese worker died for each kilometer of track connecting Canada's west and east coasts. 1885, the Métis lose their rebellion against the government, and Louis Riel is executed by hanging in Regina on charges of treason. In 1887, a coal mine explodes in Nanaimo, B.C., British Columbia, killing 150 miners. Um, the mine burned for a full day, and only seven of the workers present survived this tragedy. Um, 1912, the RMS Titanic sinks a few hundred kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland, killing more than half of the passengers and crew on board. Uh, the Titanic is an ongoing fascination of mine. Uh, it has been since I was a child. I've been studying the tragedy for must be 30 years now. Um, so feel free if you want to know more. Uh, refer to my series that I'm going to start posting uh, on the Titanic and the research that I've uh, collected over the last several decades on that. Now we move into the world conflict period. So between 1914 and 1918 we have World War I. Um, from the Canadian perspective 67,000 Canadian soldiers are killed and 173,000 others are wounded. Uh, at least 4,000 soldiers serving during this war were Indigenous Canadians. In 1916, women in Manitoba became the first in Canada to earn the right to vote, thanks largely to a woman named Nellie McClung, and much later, towards the end of the course, uh, I will uh, create and post a lesson strictly on women's suffrage and uh, women's rights in Canada. 1917, April to be specific, um, Easter weekend that year to be even more specific, was the Battle of Vimy Ridge in France. Uh, only over 3,500 Canadian soldiers were killed and more than 7,000 were wounded. And it's a pretty significant battle which we'll get into detail on later on as well as far as Canadians finally starting to see themselves as Canadian rather than uh, continuing to view themselves as British or a British colony, which was the case up until this point. Uh, in 1917 as well, on December though, towards the end of the year, uh, two ships collide in Halifax Harbor, causing a massive explosion, and the city is devastated. Nearly 2,000 people are killed. In 1919, we have the Winnipeg General Strike, where 8,000 people walked off the job for six weeks in protest of employment conditions following the end of World War I and starting uh, the major, the, one of the larger labor movements here in Canada. Uh, also in 1919, the Winnipeg Aqueduct is open. Um, it funneled water from Shoal Lake 40 First Nations into the city. Uh, it also cut off roads and access to that indigenous community for many, many years. Um, the water around the Assiniboine and Red became undrinkable, so the city chose to access its water on the other side of the Ontario border, again, without indigenous consultation. 1929, Canada officially recognizes women as persons under the law, allowing them to serve on the Canadian Senate. In 1929, the isolation of the human enzyme insulin and its connection to diabetes is discovered. And this earns Dr. Frederick Branting and Charles Best, who lived in Ontario, the Nobel Prize in Medicine that year. In 1939, Canada enters World War II. Uh, over one million soldiers from Canada served, uh, 
42,000 were killed in action and 55,000 others were injured. In 1941, Nelvana, the first Canadian and first indigenous superhero, debuts in Triumph Adventure Comics, and she appeared uh, four months before Wonder Woman made her first appearance for DC Comics. In 1945, after the end of World War II, Canada becomes a founding member of the new United Nations. Then, in 1949, Newfoundland becomes the last Canadian province to join Confederation. Uh, so even though there were a number of soldiers from Newfoundland that served in World War I and World War II, they were still a British colony up until this point and were not officially part of Canada. In 1956, the first mission of UN peacekeepers into the Suez Canal uh, takes place after Canadian Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson spearheads uh, its creation. In 1960, the Indian Act is changed, allowing First Nations people to finally vote in provincial and federal elections for the first time. The year 1965, the Red Maple Leaf is finally adopted and becomes Canada's official flag and national banner. All right, now into the late 20th century. 1966, um, Saskatchewan Premier Tommy Douglas establishes Canada's free health care system. In 1967, we have the 60s scoop, which um, involved thousands of indigenous children uh, being taken from their families by child welfare authorities and put in foster care with non-indigenous families. Um, at this point, the residential school system in Canada, uh, it had been determined that it wasn't working. Um, schools had begun to close their doors or be torn down entirely. Um, so this was another step towards indigenous assimilation or attempted assim indigenous assimilation here in Canada. In 1969, the Official Languages Act goes through Parliament, making English and French Canada's main official languages. In 1969, the pill is legalized as a form of birth control for women for the first time in Canada. 1971, Helen Betty Osborne, uh, who was born and raised in Norway House, is abducted and murdered near the Paw in Manitoba, uh, sparking um, investigations, inquiries, and advocacy uh, against uh, the many thousands of Indigenous um, women, girls, boys, and two-spirit people uh, here in Canada. 1971, uh, the construction of the Trans-Canada Highway is completed. 1981, Terry Fox, the famous runner, dies of bone cancer at the age of 23 after um, spending many years raising millions of dollars to uh, help with cancer research. In 1982, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms are created and written into federal legislation. 1987, the Meech Lake Accord happens in Quebec and is opposed by Indigenous Chief Elijah Harper because again, a lack of consultation with Indigenous people on changes to the Canadian Constitution. In 1987, the loonie, or one dollar coin, appears in circulation for the first time in Canada, replacing our paper one dollar bill. 1990, we have the Oka crisis. Uh, this was a 78-day standoff in Quebec between the military and local Mohawk residents over an attempted expansion of a golf course onto sacred indigenous lands in that region. In 1991, um, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney introduces the Goods and Services Tax, or GST, to Canada. 
1994, UN peacekeeper General Romeo Dallaire saves the lives of 30,000 people during the Rwandan genocide in Africa and he actually ignored orders um, from the UN to pull out of the area uh, in order to safeguard the lives of as many innocent people as he could uh, while this crisis was going on. In 1996, the last residential school for indigenous children in Canada finally closes its doors and it was located in a town called Punichi, Saskatchewan. 1999, Nunavut becomes Canada's third territory with a Iqaluit as its capital and uh, fully governed by the local Inuit or Anuktitut people living in that region. Now finally, the post-residential school era. Just a few short points. 2001, the World Trade Center in New York is attacked by Muslim extremists and destroyed and 24 Canadians are among the nearly 3,000 reported victims. In 2005, Canada legalizes same-sex marriage. 2008, so 20 years after the last school closed, Prime Minister Stephen Harper finally apologizes on behalf of the government to all First Nations people on live television for the government's role in residential schools. In 2019, the Freedom Road is completed, connecting Shoal Lake 40 First Nations to the Trans-Canada Highway, ending a hundred years of isolation as a result of the earlier mentioned Winnipeg Aqueduct project. And finally, 2020, um, January 25th to be specific, the first confirmed case of COVID-19 appears in Toronto, uh, Ontario. The patient survived, but since then, 4.5 million Canadians have been diagnosed with the virus and nearly 50,000 have died from it. So that is my quick overlook, overview of Canadian history from the first arrival of Indigenous people to the modern day. Um, I hope you got something out of it. As I said, there's a lot of interesting history in this country considering uh, how brief we've actually been a world nation. Um, and as we go through the course, as I said, we will touch on many of these events in more detail. So, thank you.